Stop by to interact with the community and I every Friday night at 8 o'clock for live stream Fridays. Welcome trolls. <laughs>so I think it is probably just sprained but it is so damn painful I didn't know if I was going to do and I still don't know if I'm going to do the live stream tonight I should I guess I I will but I'm not going to be up for long because I mean it was so sore that it made me want to be sick (laughs) so that was one heck of a funny um yeah funny not really funny but funny now when I think of it how it happened just bent over and started moaning and groaning on the couch because of the the bang but here's the thing guys i walked around for two days without feeling any pain and yesterday the pain started and just didn't want to end now you guys didn't come here to listen to a guy complain about a sprained foot wah 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 (laughs) i was in so much pain guys this video we're going to talk a little bit also about Um, the infrared spectrum, uh, why I'm using infrared to get asteroids and to look into deep space and the constellations. And at the same time, a little brief, uh, basic introduction as to why and how NASA is doing the same since 2009. Um, The surface of the moon here, guys, I noticed something different about Plato Crater. And now this is where it's gonna start getting fun, of course, documenting all the changes as we go along. But, you know, it's just, I have to accumulate all this, dot, all the film, right? To be able to see the changes over a long period of time. Maybe maybe we, we will not see any changes per se, um, exactly. But some of these mists and hazes on the surface, mm, they are moving around a little bit. So it, we, we have to get in closer, right? If we're not in close enough, we're not going to see the little changes. A big pocket cloud looks like looks the same from far away but when you get in close you could see the interaction on the surface of these gases or clouds and not always pleasant zooming in to be able to see it but uh it's a part of something that i love doing very much because it it's very revealing when you see the surface it's real you know it's raw footage so when you zoom in and you see these smokes and hazes and that it's not clarified i mean nasa has told us before that there's mists and hazes or, or dusts or whatever on the surface. So, you know, it, it's real. Check around Plato Crater on the left side. Here's, it's coming up, Plato Crater right here. You're gonna see on the west side 
um, I noticed that the shadow is very different during the full moon when I went up the recent full moon of February and you see here these dark lines looks like three rectangles right there and again different monitors we're gonna see different things different sized monitors is a big difference sometimes a big monitor destroys a video sometimes you need a big monitor but luckily I have a 46 megapixel camera so um, that means you guys will have a enough play around with no matter what monitor you guys are going to be looking at this with I do all this filming in 4k so say to yourself no matter what format you're looking at this in it was filmed in 4k so we're going to notice the changes as we go along and those currents or clouds if there is one there well there is one but <laughs> we don't know if it's natural or not it's not really important I'm not really trying to prove that either way I'm just trying to show some of the raw truth you know, the Apennine Mountains are just below the height of Mount Everest. This is sinus iridum right here coming up. So those Apennine Mountains, we only see a 2,000 kilometer peak, you know, at the top summit, which leads me to believe that there is a cloud cover, a very thick cloud cover, and that these mountains and everything we're looking at right now is actually just um, the tops of these tall objects peaking through a cloud cover often why people say that we see a glass surface or that we see different layers it all just makes sense i just find it makes a lot of sense this is the asteroid 4388 jurgenstock that i caught it had gone off course imagine it was supposed to make sirius the star sirius the binary system blink off for about a couple maybe a second or half a second a tenth of a second if you want but it did not it went by close and towards it and I want to talk to you guys about why I'm using the infrared and how it's going to help us find objects out there NASA's wide field infrared survey explorer the wise they call it we're talking about a space telescope that was launched in 2009 to map the entire sky in infrared wavelengths why its goal was to find objects that had not been imaged before. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And we're going to see some new objects going by. And like in the past, if you guys remember, the ones I found was simultaneously found with NASA. There's two or three objects that I declared in the same day NASA uh, had found them too. So these objects really are going by, including very bright galaxies that they could see and I'll be able to see with the infrared, but obviously not as well as NASA. Uh, very cold stars and nearby asteroids and comets. And that's what we saw in the last video that I posted. We also saw a comet or of some type go by over top afterwards of the 4388. So low albedos and high albedos, guys. If an asteroid is two kilometers wide and one is 20 kilometers wide, if that 20 kilometer asteroid is dark, and has a low albedo, it's gonna look the same size through visible light. But with the infrared, um, size is brightness. So the brighter we are seeing an object going by like this, the bigger it is. So they say this one was about five kilometers wide. I don't know, I think about the diameter. So it was something that was pretty wide. But if I was to see it in visible light, I probably would have only filmed just a little dot going by. But with the infrared spectrum camera that I use, we're able to see the tail, uh, the size, the fire, the intensity. And that is how um, NASA and scientists base their findings and observations and how they choose which size these asteroids have. This is an extremely cool object flying by the sun. One of many that I caught in the past years doing this. But this is seen with the through the visible light spectrum, meaning it was a straight up camera and filming the sun with a polarized filter over top of the camera, my D3400, seeing these asteroids or meteors flying by. So the difference with an infrared camera, if this had been an infrared camera, we would have seen uh, the color around it, the fire, the intensity of this object, because again, um, don't forget anything from two kilometers to 20 kilometers of an asteroid in size, we're probably going to see the same sized object 
through the visible spectrum. That means the spectrum that our eyes can see with the naked eye and through the cameras. Again, cameras do pick up um, infrared light a lot more than our eyes, even camera telephones. Uh, you know, like cameras inside of telephones can also pick up that light that our eyes are not picking up. So this is a close-up shot of what it looks like with a straight-up shot with a camera of this object catching on fire as it's entering or going near the sun's corona and then flying across the moon. Pretty awesome. I could actually see a, um, a good look at the shape of this rock and also whatever's trailing behind it, like a sort of mist we can see. But again, it's in the visible, visible spectrum. This isn't uh, with infrared. That's the difference. Now with the infrared, we're always going to be able to see the intensity of the light, giving us a very big idea of the sizes of things. So this would be about three to four miles wide. What about this? This would be the size of Earth a lot bigger than the size of Earth. I'm just trying to understand, you know, uh, in comparison to the size of the sun. I mean, whoa, this object is monstrous. Caught that at the end of 216 or beginning of 217, 217, I think. Just absolutely incredible with a filter, polarized lens, a regular camera, but again, no infrared spectrum. Suzanne Paul, welcome to the community. Thanks for the generous donation from Germany. Hello, Germany. James Goudini or Goudine? I scrap names. James Goudini. That sounds so movie-like. I hope I'm pronouncing your names right, guys. Thanks for the generous donations, James. And Char Gordon. Thanks so much for the generous contributions, for being a part of this amazing community. I love you guys.